Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books. You know what? It's a video about the woke meltdown going on over Warner Brothers Discovery and their cutting of projects that don't fit their strategy. Now, we've talked about this before. I've got a playlist of, now it's 40 videos on Warner Brothers Discovery and David Zaslov and what they're doing over there. Today, I came across an article that I thought was pretty well written, not 100% accurate, but pretty well written pretty entertaining and also some great uh links they did some great research doing this uh warner brothers discovery maniacally slashes all programming until only a naked matt smith remains this is coming from the michigandaily.com but well written I, I have to say uh we will get into this article before we do be sure to subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up when you like it because it is an amazing help. You guys are the best. The channel's growing. I'm really, really excited. On April 8th, 2022, 153 days before the British Queen Regent Elizabeth II's death, AT&T's Warner Media and Discovery combined and became Warner Brothers Discovery. You're going to see how upset she gets. As a consequence of the merger, Warner Brothers Discovery arranged a marriage between its streaming counterparts, HBO Max, the illustrious home of Matt Smith's nearly filmed in cinematic two to one aspect ratio and Discovery plus a ruthless unscripted cable TV swamp. Now on that link, this is from the MarySue.com. This is what it links to House of the Dragon episode four director wanted to subvert the male gaze. Now, everyone who tries to subvert anything with respect to an audience should be immediately fired. You can tell me what you think of that in the comments below. Uh, directors have a right to want to interpret their own vision, but when they're doing things to undermine the audience and make the audience unhappy for their own little, to me, sick pleasures of just trying to disappoint people who are investing their time and their energy in the project. You know, when you make a creative project, you've got a lot that you need to put into it. You're investing in it. It's your uh, life. It's your energy. It's your being. It's your career. But at the same time, you're also in asking thousands, tens of thousands, or millions upon millions of people to invest their time and their identity and their energy into watching something. So you shouldn't do anything to subvert anything unless there's some brilliant artistic statement that's going to then enlighten the audience in a way that could change their lives for the better. That's not what this was. This was because they're doing some sort of a scene that, you know, basically that naked women in it, they wanted to uh, make sure, the director wanted to make sure that men didn't enjoy it. I, whatever it is that they're trying to think of, just more woke silliness, but an interesting link nonetheless. Um, okay. So this was the merger right with, with Discovery Plus, a ruthless, unscripted cable TV swamp. However, the company shakeup has been dogged by controversy, internal leaks, and disappointing cancellations. In an absurdly short period of time, the media company cornered its contracted artists into considering pirating their own work and became the latest battleground in a larger con conversation regarding artists, ownership of art, and corporatism. Pirating their own work? Well, this isn't their work. This is a work for hire project. This was the directors of Batgirl trying to pirate their um, movie before HBO Max locked them out of the servers. So these gentlemen were the directors of Batgirl. Uh, Batgirl was canceled by um, the owners and the creators of it because it's it's a work for hire's uh, property. Um, Warner Brothers Discoveries, the new management, they decided, nope, they don't want to make Batgirl. So when creators decide, well, we're going to go ahead and steal the movie and we'll put it out on our own. And, you know, they're lucky they didn't do it because they could have got themselves in some legal trouble. And this is the thing is like, you know, if you're creating your own content, this is the great thing about Comicsgate. Uh, Comicsgate, you should definitely research Comicsgate. You just put hashtag Comicsgate on uh, Twitter or type Comicsgate into YouTube. You'll see it's a great community. I'm part of the community producing our own content and, contro and controlling our own uh, projects and some really fun people. Uh, but when you work for another company on a work for hire basis, they are the creators of it. That's just the way it goes. And the reason you do it is you do it for the paycheck and you've got a responsibility to deliver. And if the boss says, 
they don't want to produce it, it ain't getting produced. That's the way it goes. So, um, you know, you, you, they're not victims for trying to pirate their own work. They're not supposed to be pirating the work of the company. If the company spent $90 million making the project, it's not for them to go stealing it. And it is theft. The, okay, the latest battleground in a conversation regarding artists, ownership of art, and corporatism. The thing of it is, is this. Be like me. Be like the Comiscape people. Create your own content. Pay for your own artists. Pay for your own creators to help you make the book if you need that. Or produce it all yourself. Or go work for a company, take the paycheck, and build your career. People make those decisions all the time. Author says, not as all is well with Warner Brothers Discovery. Newly installed. He was not installed. <laughs> he took over Warner Media. The reason there is a Warner uh, Brothers Discovery is because of David Zasloff. They wanted him in management because of his reputation. He cut his TV executive teeth on unscripted reality television series like 90 Day Fiance, as well as I like to mention uh, Honey Boo Boo, that project for TLC, which he took the Learning Channel and turned it into a reality you know, mishmash of very popular shows and had a meteoric rise, uniting his much smaller Discovery Group with a gigantic Warner Media. The Discovery was about a $30 billion company or so, and Warner Media was a roughly $85 billion company. So it was smaller, but it wasn't infinitesimal. Perhaps conscious of his unscripted reality TV pedigree, Zaslav initially attempted to create a narrative of himself as a pro artist and pro creative. Well, uh, he had now he's had multiple profiles. His recent profile in the Wall Street Journal includes quotes from Zaslav's corporate peers testifying to his financial sensibility and support for artists. And he's had very interesting profiles. He's the talk of the town, really. I mean, a lot of people are talking about Zaslav now. He was covered in Financial Times. He was covered in Wall Street Journal. He was covered in Vanity Fair. Um, I haven't done coverage for each of those um, articles. I probably will. Uh, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll talk about it. Uh, but a lot of people are interested in what he's doing. The reason why he's in the Wall Street Journal is investors need to know, well, who is this guy? What's he going to do with the properties? The exclusion of artists working with HBO Max and Discovery Plus alludes to Zaslav's priorities, namely, a, okay, this is, it's really been terrible that the people that are working on animation projects uh, for HBO Max, um, it's terrible. There are tremendous cancellations all over the place. You have to feel for them, but um, there are reasons why they need to cancel them. Uh, and, and some of that is covered pretty well, actually, in this article a little bit later on. Uh, in a way, I had seen people cover it before. Um, they had the $55 billion debt. Well, it was actually a $58 billion debt. It's now down to about a $52 billion uh, debt because they paid off $6 billion of it because of, you know, good management. I mean, that's, that's what it's about. In an opening salvo to defray the debt, Zaslav laid off 14% of company staff, the majority being HBO alums. Now, laying off staff, does that have to do with reducing the debt? Um, sort of. I mean, it, it, that's not where they're going to get their $3 billion in uh, synergies from. Um, but they don't need them. They got to go. That decision led to former executives accusing Zaslav of being anti-diversity, given the composition of the company's leadership and the demographic of employees fired. Well, it's merit. It's not skin color. And that's one of the things that I think is so amazing because you're going to see more and more woke meltdowns because it's it's going to be merit. Either you are profitable for the company or you are really good at what you do or you're not going to work at the company. The recent addition of, oh, diversity this, diversity that, representation this, is not enough to keep your job at a company that has $50 billion in debt that's all about business and delivering for the consumer. The extra agenda, there's no place for it. But the round of layoffs was only one prong of many myopic cost-saving changes. Small-sided myopic. August 22 was an emotionally crushing period for staff and creative teams working at Warner Brothers Discovery. Well, I guess the ones who, you know, got their projects canceled. 
Without any notice or communication, Zaslav began acting programming, secretly removing content secretly from streaming services <laughs> and deleting social media posts. I don't assume it was him doing it secretly, but probably his people were doing it without public announcements. Now, let me ask you a quick question. Maybe you could answer me this one. Why would Zaslav not let people know? Why would his people, you know, not let creators know weeks ahead of time, uh, hey, it looks like we're going to be canceling this content? Is it because they don't respect the creators? No, it's because they have wackos like these guys. I mean, I'm sorry, but, you know, no, when you openly admit that you are trying to pirate the property of the film, you know, paid for by your employers, you know, $90 million out of pocket, and you're saying you're going to pirate it? No, you're not trustworthy. That's why you're not being told in advance, hey, listen, we've got a change in strategy. We've got some different things that we're doing. Um, you know, we're going to have to discontinue the film and accept the tax write-off for it. Um, but that's why people weren't told. That's why creators weren't told, because they demonstrated they couldn't be trusted. I mean, I, I, unfortunately, it's just if you want to know why they weren't told, that's why. I mean, it can't be trusted. Most prominent among those revenue-driven decisions is the shelving of HBO's nearly finished $90 million Batgirl film. Variety reports that Zaslav did not believe the film would recoup production and advertising costs and made an unprecedented decision to bury the movie and claim a tax break. Effectively, if a company declares that it will stop profiting off a piece of media, it can claim a tax break for its associated costs. Okay, this gets into complicated tax stuff, but that's essentially correct. To clarify, HBO had already invested roughly $90 million into a nearly completed product. Fans and actors were excited about its release. There were some fans that were excited about it, other fans that were not. And actors, I'm sure, were excited about it. Warner Brothers Discovery is not soft releasing its product or sending it straight to streaming to save on advertising. Okay, so she's, she's not aware, the author, that the film was initially intended to be released only on HBO Max, straight to HBO Max, to create more subscribers. That was Jason Kylar's film uh, strategy was, you know, let's just release uh, original product on HBO Max, try to get a ton of subscribers to HBO Max because we're releasing films directly to the platform. The problem with that strategy is it actually doesn't work. Um, that's not why people would be subscribing to the platform. And I'm not saying that I knew better. I would have thought this could have worked. Jason Kylar is the founder of Hulu. He knows his stuff. But the strategy didn't pan out. It didn't work out. So they considered, well, can we release this as a regular feature film? And the answer was, um, yeah, we can, but it's, it's not going to do well. We're not going to get back more money than we would have gotten from a tax break from just canceling the damn thing. But what's even worse is it sends a message to the rest of uh, the executives and the people planning programming like, oh, we would consider this kind of, you know, woke Batgirl stuff, and it, it was a woke movie, as acceptable for the properties. It's not acceptable for the properties. It's not going to maximize the dollar value of the properties. It's not what the true super fans want. And everything needs to be built on the back of super fans, not finding some mythical new audience that doesn't exist from the woke world. Like a horrible remix of Zack Snyder's Justice League, HBO has a fully filmed exciting project that they're burying alive. Well, the film isn't done. It would have needed a lot more editing and then it would need needed promotion. And it, it's just a waste of time. They don't have time for that. They also can't demonstrate to investors, hey, guess what? We can ruin the intellectual property to please woke people. No, they can't. It, it, it's not going to make investors have confidence in uh, this in the company, in the new management, and the value of the brands. So they can't play around with that. Now is a crucial time for them to show they can deliver what they promised, that they can manage the brands well and produce multi-billion dollar properties, not anything else. But Batgirl is only one example of many. Overnight, fans found out that their favorite shows vanished from HBO Max's catalog and were unavailable elsewhere. Cartoon programming was unceremoniously shelved, causing a sharp outcry from fans. Animators from visually stunning and narratively ambitious projects in development like Driftwood and Bye Bye Bunny, a Looney Tunes musical, were held in suspense for days, uncertain if their projects would move forward. Those animators are now looking for work. Again, this is the problem with working for a company. You know, you do your own thing, and a lot of us have, or you take the check, or you do a combination of both. You work for the 
big company, you know, just to be able to pay the bills and do what you got to do so that you can create your own stuff. I mean, that is the way it is. It, it is show business is a business. To further the confusion, content related to the removed cartoon programming was deleted from HBO Max, Cartoon Network, HBO Max, and Cartoon Network's Twitter and YouTube accounts. Julia Pott, the creator of the popular cartoon Summer Island Camp, has a Twitter page eerily absent of prior statements and posts. She retweeted a post from Cartoon Network a week prior to the media purge, and now her retweet nestles in a gray box that says the content is no longer available. Fans are crowdsourcing piracy links and taking stock of what was deleted. It's interesting. So, you know, fans are, are giving opportunities and saying, hey, well, I'm going to upload this file here and I'm going to upload that file there. Um, you know, you can crowdsource just about anything. This is an interesting link and this will be um, in the link to the article uh, in the comments and uh, in the, in the description of this video of uh, people just kind of talking about you know, all the cancellations. I mean, it, the cancellations are enormous. So it's uh, it's uh, too bad. Of course, it's on Tumblr, but, you know, it is where it is. Amidst the chaos, Pot took to Twitter to express her frustration and explain the situation to panic fans. Similarly, Owen Dennis, the creator of Infinity Train, lauded for its innovations, innovative soundtrack and animation, updated fans in his Substack newsletter. In his letter... He notes that the disapproval is not limited to the creative teams and fans blindsided by the scrubbing. Dennis writes that Cartoon Network warned the company not to do this, and this would hurt relationships with creators and talent. But they clearly do not care what any of this looks like publicly, much less about how we feel about it. They care how you feel about it. The problem is, here's what the problem is. You know, if you're not going to do the Batgirl movie, then why would you be doing Infinity Train? And if you're not, if you are going to do Infinity Train then why are you not canceling, you know, the other projects, Summer Island Camp? You know, you, you, there has to be a rhyme or reason for what you're doing. Uh, and you also still need to continue to send a message to the rest of the 40,000 employees. This is what we're focused on. And it's got to be merit and it's got to make money. Quite aptly, John Oliver, host of an HBO talk show, commented during one of his television segments that, quote, I do get the vague sense that Warner Brothers Discovery is burning down my network for the insurance money. That is funny. Um, it may feel like that, but they're not burning down the network. They're they're getting rid of what they don't need. And unfortunately, you know, they, they're rearranging the house. They bought the house. Now they're rearranging the furniture and they're throwing some stuff out. I mean, unfortunately, that's that's what it is. And Oliver got it exactly right. At the heart of the bizarre, convoluted, and ongoing story that is the Warner Media and Discovery Group merger is a financial policy that prioritizes marginal financial gains over arts and culture. Okay, so this is an article in uh, CNBC. It's an interesting article. I've never done this one, uh, this article. It's probably worth its own uh, video. And they do a good job of explaining um, what the financial incentives are and how that basically works. But no, you know, if you're going to go work for some corporate company, you're going to go work for Disney, you're going to go work for Warner Brothers Discovery, you're certainly not expecting them to uphold um, a priority over arts and culture because they're not sponsored by the government for the purposes of promoting certain culture, even though there's a lot of woke stuff, which is being treated like a religion, being pushed on the public at the expense of uh, money and shareholders. Um, but it's not supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be like a business and you produce the stuff and keep the stuff that works and you get rid of the stuff that doesn't work, even if it's good content, but it's not fitting what you want to strategically focus on. And the thing with strategic focus is like, there's millions and millions of dollars involved. You can't have confusion over this stuff. It's got to be clear, like what you're trying to do and why to everyone. The mildest outrage involved in the merger is the leaked sexist diagram from the company's quarterly meeting where the company outlined the benefits of HBO Max Discovery plus betrothal. According to them, HBO attracts male-oriented fandom, oh no, while Discovery attracts female genre -dom, a term as bland as it is condescending and inaccurate. No, it's completely accurate. Like cooking shows, good for the girls. Um, it, when you've got like these um, whodunit mysteries and these, you know, the ID channel, women love that. They just do. 
HBO attracts male oriented fandom. Well, it is. I mean, you know, look, they look at numbers. This isn't like, oh, well, I'm pretty, so I think of this and I want this and you should treat men like women and women can also be men. Like, whatever, sure. But they're, they're talking about statistics and numbers. These are like very serious business guys. They know who their audience is. Warner Brothers uh, Discovery, before the merger with Warner Media, is like the number one channel for women. Um, they, they spend the most time, women, on their channels. Oprah, The Learning Channel, whatever. You know, their whole mix of their women's networks, they have a huge market segment. They, they know the numbers, and that's what they're talking about. HBO, okay, <laughs> that term is bland. It's not condescending, inaccurate. Okay, anyway, there's nothing wrong with being a woman or a man. You could be both if you want to. But the corporation's sexist material reveals the scope of its ignorance. Now, by the way, they have to, they talk about this stuff in business meetings. They show, here's the diagram. The wedding, okay, where's the, the link to the diagram? Okay, here it is. HBO Max has a male skew, it's with a scripted material, it's lean in appointment viewing, home of quote fandoms, super fans, okay, and they're aware of that. Discovery Plus has a female skew, it's unscripted, it leans back. Comfort viewing, home of genre dumps, meaning like product categories. So, you know, why is this in their financial report? because they don't like genders. No, it, it's not about not liking genders. Advertisers actually need to know this. They need to know when they're spending money and they wanna re reach women that are interested in buying what women buy or men. They've gotta target their advertising certain ways. It's so funny to be people like rage against reality, but it is, I mean, that should have been the title of um, the video. Uh, but it, it is reality. HBO as a streaming service has a responsibility to more entities than just than big budget House of the Dragon and the Harry Potter movie collection, Warner Brothers Discovery made a miscalculation when it started burning bridges. Did they? In approaching TV shows and movies like Sinking and Rising Stocks, the newly conjoined company bumbled onto an existential landmine. I mean, it's pretty well written, it's entertaining. Can corporations be responsible stewards of art and popular culture? No, you need the government to do it. That's why the government um, supports ESG. The response, you do not need the government to do it, and they shouldn't be supporting ESG. The response as of September 22nd is a resounding no from creatives and consumers. The ones who are mad at them. I mean, the people who are not mad at them are like, yeah, fine, that's no problem. I have no problem what they're doing. I, I wish that the animation wasn't all being canceled. I feel bad for those guys and gals and so on. Uh, but I understand business. It's happened to me and I've done it to other people sometimes. You, you can't continue work that's not successful work. Quote, what is the point of making something, spending years of working on it, putting in nights and weekends, doing their terrible notes, uh, taking notes from producers and executives at the company to change your work, losing sleep and not seeing our families. If it's just gonna be taken away and shot in the backyard, it's so incredibly discouraging and they're definitely not going to be getting their best work out of whoever decides to stay. We're working at the intersection of art and commerce, but the people in charge have clearly forgotten that they'll have no commerce without art. And, and I guess the people with the art forgot that there's no commerce without the business people. It's a marriage between creative and business people, and it's not for everybody. If you can create your own content and you don't need someone else to pay for it, you don't have to take any feedback from them and you're not interested in their distribution and whatever, you're gonna do your own thing and get it out your own way, a lot of people have succeeded doing that. Many more people have failed than have ever succeeded doing that, but you can be successful doing that. But you know, the reason to spend years working on something and put in nights and weekends and you know, is because you're competing with other people that want to do the same thing and they're paying you to do that. To get paid to be able to do creative expression is a miracle of um, the Western civilization that you can actually get paid to do art at all just doesn't mean that you could do whatever you want and they're gonna just keep funding it if they don't agree that they wanna continue with it. From Zaslov's Financial Times profile, published in May, Appear offers a now haunting commentary on Zaslov's Warner Brothers Discovery merger leadership. Quote, a load of people in Hollywood are in shock that someone who's as gauche get, as Zaslov gets to run away with the crown jewels. So 
That is to say, yeah, people in Hollywood are shocked that they're going to be answering to this guy. And the reason they're going to answer to this guy, Zaslav, is because people with uh, billions of dollars invested and people in positions of power and reason to have to know he's got the experience it takes to make the tough decisions and make money from these intellectual properties, they know he's trustworthy and he'll do the difficult things that he needs to do. I don't think the guy's perfect. I don't know what he's going to do and hopefully it all works out. I think it will. But the reason he gets to make these choices is because he's proven himself in the past and that's why people support him. All right, let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. I'll have links to everything in the comments. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications, and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.